And we are live. We are live. Hey, hi guys. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening once again, and welcome to Fortune Talks with Fortune Changers. Uh, we have experts from different fields, and today we are here to share with you, uh, you know, amazing topic about uh, failure is success, right? So. So you you might be wondering how failure can actually lead to success, but then you know you might have heard a lot of sayings that um, you know failure is actually the key to success, or uh, failure is uh, you know leads to stepping stone to success, and you know uh, failure is actually not opposite to success, but it is part of success. So this is what we're going to discuss today, uh, you know and. Um, so let me introduce the first speaker for the day. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Vivek Gangadhar, who calls himself uh, Vivji is Finance. You know, we've heard about uh, fitness in health, but uh, our Vivek talks about uh, fitness in finance. Mm -hmm. So he's he's there to uh, tell you, you know, how failure in um, finance can lead you into, uh, you know, become financially fit right so yes yes think, vivek uh, so let us know uh, vivek uh, how actually money can never fail you interesting question prema so good evening everyone good morning good afternoon uh, just type in a hi you know, just type in a hi if you're here um, so why my money can never fail you uh, you know what i have not failed I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. It was not told by me. It was told by Thomas Edison. Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently, told by Henry Ford. See, look, at least once in your life, you are going to fail at something, for sure. Okay, Your talent, intelligence, hard work, skills, passion will not be able to save you. Failure is in inevitable, right? Everybody has failed, although some refuse to admit it. Don't let them fool you. If you research the stories of most successful people of our time, you'll find they too have failed. In fact, it was failure that produced the success stories of people like Steve Jobs, who made a lot of money. Oprah Winfrey, who's still raking in lots of money. Walt Disney. I mean, we, we cannot even think about the kind of money that they have and they continue to grow. Jack Ma, right? Just to name a few. So calm down. You're in an incredible company. You're with fortune changes. Okay. I'll just narrate two small incidents of what happened. You know, a story for you. Uh, it was the year 2018. I got fired from my job. Okay. And uh, money stopped coming in. Okay. Just for a few months, but it stopped coming in. Right. And I had, uh, you know, EMIs and, you know, I want to keep the uh, savings also afloat. You know what I did? I did a lot of research and development. I'm at home. What can I do now? Right. And I got into online business. Right. And I again started to earn. So that's exactly why money didn't fail me. Why money will ever fail me? OK, so because if it had failed me, it wouldn't have given the chance to start the online business for myself. Now, if I have to go back in 2001, okay, when I was 21, uh, where I lost my dad and lost my own house and, um, and I didn't have a, house and a roof to live under, I didn't have food to, I didn't have money to eat food, right? I didn't know where to do, where to go, what to, I was just 21 year old, just out of college, right? And I started to look for jobs and I, I went fiercely looking for actions. I took that action to look for a job. Right. And I landed a job after just two months. Loan EMS were already due, actually. Right. So I took action, spoke to bankers that, at that point of time, made them understand my situation. They gave me some time. They were flexible. So thanks. Thanks to them. Right. And I started my job and money started coming in. I started eventually clearing up the EMIs. Right. So and then I started a new life. That's why money didn't fail me. But what is actually the common things among these two incidents in my life, Prema? OK, is that. I found new ways to make money. And yes, I did make money. But what if I had you know, really failed? I would have just analyzed for some more opportunities, how to make more and more out of it. Though I wasn't aware at that point of time that money is nothing but energy. And it is linked directly to the way I was thinking. But for me, you know, somewhere deep down, I always had the gratitude for money, right? Of the present, past, present, and future money. That's exactly why money was always flowing to me. And that's why money didn't fail me, Prima. 
That's wonderful, Vivek. I can actually relate when you say money is energy and, you know, gratitude actually, you know, brings you more and more. Wonderful. So, uh, so if at all, so you said money, uh, you know, you or you went through failure, right? So if money has failed you, what is that proven path to success that actually helped you? Yeah, see, uh, this proven path, what I recommend, uh, which uh, if you go deep down researching, it's followed by most, most of the successful men on the planet today okay uh, i have a uh, like a six steps process six steps okay six. First step is start waking up at 4 55 a.m not 5 a.m 4 55 a.m okay and make the first hour the most intense hour be part of a group work out meditate uh, affirmations and uh, self-learning gratitudes step number two write five gratitudes every day show gratitude for the money show more of it Okay, feel the emotions when you're actually showing this gratitude. For example, when I write, I would say this, I'm so grateful for the combined balances of all my bank accounts. I'm so grateful for all my deposits, fixed deposits and other investment debt instruments that is paying me, uh, mm -hmm. you know, interest. I'm so grateful for all the lenders, banks, companies who paid me salary, businesses that is paying me money for enabling, enabling inflow of money to me, right? Like that. And for, for example, one more thing you can you can say is that I'm grateful to my country's currency and all the world countries' currencies because of that, there's an exchange of value, and that's exactly what is enabling exchange of energy into me. Right? That's step number two. Step one, start waking up at 455. Second two, step two is gratitude. Step three is bless the money. Yes. Every inflow and outflow of money, bless it. You know, for example, you can say, Hey, thank you for serving me till now. Now the money is going out, please go some, serve someone else and bless it with full gratitude. Okay. Step four is, uh, usually we hear folks say, you know, never stop trying, never stop trying. I will say, you know what? Stop trying. Instead, start doing. Okay. So even if you're not ready, just start. Don't look for perfection. Step number five is, success, success is never ever found in comfort zone. Always look for that uncomfortable zones. That's where the money will start you know money that is where money would never fail you okay and uh, step c uh, step 6 is that don't go hard on yourself okay love yourself you are an unique mass of subatomic particles in the universe you are unique okay so bless yourself and say cheers to life okay just celebrate it these are my six steps uh, formula uh, if a money has failed you this is a proven path to, to success automatically you start becoming like a magnet and start you know attracting money for you Uh, Prema, I'm sorry, can't hear me. Sorry, yes, yeah, I, I was on mute. Sorry. Okay. So wonderful steps uh, that you have shared, uh, Vivek, and uh, I can I can relate so much, especially the point number one that you said not even 5 a.m. wake up at 4:55. Uh, similarly, you know, actually I wake up at 4:44. I, I don't know for what reason, but I just like to see that triple four and, you know, relate to something nice, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in terms of universe. Uh, and um, somebody actually one day asked me every time they see the good morning message in the group, uh, is there a reason why you get up at 444? I said, I just wow. like the number triple four. And I, and I made sure, just like you said, you know, why should it be 5 a.m.? Let it be before 5. And I thought yeah. 445, then I'm like, no, triple four. So 444. So I can really relate so much, and that's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. So, thank you. Thank you, Prima. Wonderful <laughs> questions you asked me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so next uh, speaker, we have uh, Rajat Jain, um, you know, author of uh, Floating Happiness, who himself is always floating with happiness, and uh, is also author coach. And uh, so Rajat, uh, good evening, and um, let us know how to deal with failure in writing because we would since you are author yourself and you are author coach we would really like to know about this from you yeah thank you thank you prema uh, wonderful question so failure is uh, definitely a stepping stone to success it's a fundamental it's a it's a principle that leads to success it's kind of a connecting bridge to success uh, i think uh, it's a good question which you are asking that how to deal with failure in writing. Um, I think uh, if I recollect my story sometime back a few years ago, I want I always wanted to write. I always wanted to write a book. There were many people who were um, 
objecting who just could not um, grasp the fact that i can also write there were a lot of um, uh, friends of mine family members at times telling me that hey you have a full time job you have a whole family to take care and uh, you are not good enough can you really write you are not that ripe mango who can fall and actually that led me um, you know always sitting on a fence on a sidelines um which is uh, something i uh, the reason i took this author coach as a as a profession that uh, when i do see some of the people who are uh, sitting uh, like me few years ago which i actually wasted i could have spent quite a good time over writing it and giving it to the world and contribute at least i can find that out and can can motivate them that hey you are a ripe mango now you better fall now you better get into it uh, and uh, share your message to the world because i strongly believe everyone has a story to share so i think one thing is that uh, how to deal with failure in writing ensure that you are in a right environment there will be people friends family members at times who will say that hey you can't do it you are not good enough i think it's okay to listen to them maybe from the other ear take it out and um, and uh, as vivek was mentioning it act don't try act keep doing it that's what that's what's number one what i would say prema second thing which i would say is that many times people quit too early so don't quit too early you write and you feel like oh i am not getting the hang of it i feel like i could do something else maybe in this time uh, some of the people who i gave my writing or a manuscript they are saying that i didn't like it i think you can do better you know the criticism will always be there as well and then you stop you put the stop you know okay enough i think i'm not good enough i'm not that right mango i don't know i think i need some more time and you know the nature of a mind is also the protectionist so it, it will always like you to go into your comfort zone so i think that's kind of a quick good match and then you stop writing so i say that don't quit too early you need to keep writing if it takes 10 years also to be a best seller i think you can always say to people that 9 years i did a preparation and 1 year is my success best seller so it's not your 9 years as a failure it's your 9 years preparation so that's what i would say as a, another tip that you know this is how if you put your mindset like you know dealing with a failure in writing uh, with the, the approach of preparation not as a failure that would do wonders other thing i would say is that there is no such thing as failure in my dictionary i feel these are the lessons which are been learned and i always prefer to celebrate failures there will be failures of course celebrate it once you get that attitude i think uh, you are unstoppable you're going to be unstoppable i remember a story very quickly to share with you what i recollect a ceo of a multi million dollar organization was sharing a story that on a dining table with his family he is eating a dinner when he was 10 years old since 10 years of his age every weekend sunday same time around 8 pm his father used to ask that what all failures did you see last week my son and he used to tell i failed in my football scoring i failed in my maths exam i did not score good in english and his father used to say cheers awesome they were like celebrating failures and that same person the ceo of a multi million dollar organization he was saying whenever i used to say that hey you know what i did not fail anything anywhere today or this week and he used to say, and he said that i used to see a disappointment in my father's eyes and his father used to say okay and then they move on so the message which i am trying to tell you here is that it's important to celebrate failures and don't see failures as a failure it's a lesson um, if that attitude comes to us and to our children i think we can do a lot good and lot wonders to the to the world to the society which we've been living into and always remember that past is not equal to future whatever has happened in the past is not equal to future it's not going to happen again you know like okay i may fail again though in our society 
it's kind of a misnomer that you know they say that hey you know what this guy failed again this five may failed again because he was failed before actually the the probability of success is much more because you have already gone through some of the lessons you know uh, one of my mentor the world's best uh, uh, motivator teacher tony robbins he used to say that you know the only thing that keep us getting from where we want to go is the story what we are telling to us that why we can't get it so i think these are the few things which i would mention prema uh, on you know how to deal with a failure in writing very very Man. well uh, uh, you know uh, very nice sharing uh, rajat thank you actually you know uh, you're not good enough i think most of us would have heard this right most of the successful people have actually come across this sentence saying that you're not good enough you know why you are doing this uh, i'm sure many people will be able to relate with you uh, today and you know don't quit don't quit because rajat says that it was it was not 9 years of failure but 9 years of trying he kept trying without quitting and celebrating failure that's such a wonderful to actually know uh, so uh, so apart from this rajat so what are your top 3 reasons you think that why uh, you know author prospects fail to bring their uh, writing masterpiece wow good question i don't know about three in fact uh, same question is running in my head as well rajat so so keen to know the answer yeah yeah i think uh, good question uh, top 3 reasons you are saying why author prospects fail i don't know about top 3 reasons as such but yeah i will give a try here um, prema um see i think uh, what i feel is that uh, there are many there are two sets of people there are two sets of people one one set of people are who feel like you know i want to use a writing as a marketing collateral there is nothing wrong in that there is nothing wrong in that they want to use this as a marketing collateral they say that hey it is going to help me in my business let me do that let me do that but their subject knowledge is not good their subject knowledge is not good and you know i want to share with this medium to all my trainers and coaching friends please stop producing that 10 page and 15 page book it's not a book it's a pamphlet please stop doing it it's not helping you gaining the credibility it's actually destroying your credibility so what i'm saying is that it's important to have a subject knowledge it's like you know that you want to drive in a ferrari racing car track with a old rusty truck so if the old rusty truck will go into the ferrari racing car track who is your customer you know it will go all different places you need at least a standard ferrari to drive that for standard ferrari on a on a racing car track so i think that's number one that one set of people you need to have a subject knowledge spend some time on it it's okay do the research second set of people who are very good who are really good they're ripe people ripe mangoes but nobody has told them that they are good and they have a feeling of that i am not good enough i am not good enough i nobody has told me so i can see that there are a lot of people the book is there for them with them but they just not bringing it out because they do not have that sort of a confidence in them nobody has told them and they feel like you know that i may not i may not able to do it like as i said i am not good enough that feeling that keeps getting and i think that is the reason why 84 85% of people want to write a book if you see a google search but less than 0.5% able to achieve it because of these two reasons you know those two sets of people so my message to at least the so first set of people is get the subject matter expertise take your time and you know become at least a standard ferrari to drive on a fix yourself and then fix the world by sharing your story and driving a racing car track and to the second set of people get into the right environment any time you get a clue you know success leaves a clue any time you get a clue get into it fail research repeat the process do not stop because if you again stop then again it's going to be a same standard comfort zone of your mind protectionist will come and say that hey you know what i'm not good enough 
so as soon as you feel that yeah i do have a touch which i can um, share it with lot of people around research do it take action repeat fail repeat repeat and this process whole that is how i would answer your question prema very wonderful wonderful rajiv actually that's that's really very nice points that you have given so remember people uh, whether it is you who is thinking you know you're, you're not good enough or somebody else is telling you not good enough just don't get distracted you know repeat repeat fail and repeat fail and repeat fail like rajit said just keep trying without quitting so thank you for that wonderful sharing rajit today and uh, so next we have uh, our uh, satish rao network marketer so satish uh, question for you how has failures shaped your own you know success in current business okay <laughs> okay so uh, for me uh, as you know i have been in the corporate world in corporate uh, jobs in india and for a few years also abroad so for me when um, i decided to quit my job and do something on my own in fact it happened the other way around i didn't decide to quit i got an offer to join some people some friends in some business venture and you know when you are doing well in your career <clears throat> and when you are uh, doing you know uh, you are you are very happy with the position that you are holding and the work that you are doing uh, you are really in a high so it's like you know uh, for me particularly like it correlated like this you know, like a child goes to a candy store the mother gives 10 rupees to the child and says you know take this 10 rupees and you can buy any candy that you want you know this is your day just go and decide so then the child is very excited you know you got 25 paise candy is got 35 paise 50 paise 1 rupee so you can do a permutation and combination okay like when we were young there used to be these glass bottles in the counter of the candy store or even the provision store they used to have this uh, uh, candy bottles and one will be like that white and black ripple like a ball there will be something which is like a gold coin you know and each one will ask the price what is the price of this what is the price of bhaiya iska kitna price iska kitna price hai uh, then you make a combination in the 10 rupees how much can i maximum squeeze and get the maximum out of that you know so for people like me who have been in corporate world for many years when you uh, when you don't even decide to step out and you just Uh, are doing well and suddenly you get opportunity to work with some people or have a business opportunity you feel really feel that you're on the high you know you feel you're high you're like wanted you know and you feel that you can really encash on the expertise that you have built over the corporate life that you have had and that the world is waiting for you waiting for you with bated breath like come 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 please you know help us you know so that was my situation without understanding what are the pros and cons of business what is it that i want what is it that i'm doing what is the value that i'm doing just because there were some good well meaning friends who said come on let's let's do this i took the plunge it might sound very naive but that's a fact i after having worked for many years in the corporate world this is the way i plunged into into a business opportunity and it took me about 4 years of failure in two ventures to decide that things are not as rosy as you think in the corporate world you might have held any position in the corporate world you might have been the most senior or middle level or whatever in the management and you might have done exceedingly well in the jobs but the the world of business the world of entrepreneurship is totally different so it was a rude shock for me it was a ego hit for me and i was down in the dumps uh, you know with really uh, two failures on my back having financial burden of all of that and then that was the time it was time for me to wake up that was a wake up call for me and then i did some evaluation uh, i am not very analytical person i go by my heart you know i i am a i am a person who thinks from emotions you know i am like that and uh, i i really took some time to decide and i tried various things without taking the plunge i tried various things i learned a lot of stuff i attended a lot of seminars a lot of trainings i looked at various options and i took plunge to two three things in a very many a uh, very uh, not deep way but not by putting too much of commitment in terms of finances and then i found my calling sometime last year in april and and that is what it led to me like the failures i would say uh, where you know my mindset when i was working in corporate world was like this that i am doing well in the corporate world i am earning well i am doing very well so why do i need to look at entrepreneurship but the failures in entrepreneurship made me learn more Uh, go to leaders, go to uh, coaches, learn from them, 
and imbibe those things and implement it like wavex said implement take action and that massive action helped me to really find my path and uh, that helped me to uh, really do what i'm doing today yeah very nice very nice to hear that actually so is is there any smart way to actually succeed in you know creating that um, additional income and uh, is there anything you would like to share about that yeah thanks mehra so basically it's a good question uh, so for me um, i did a self analysis i felt that although typically a uh, lot of people talk about having business for the sake of having business in terms of having uh, you know uh, uh, the freedom of time and all of that for me personally i felt that uh, solo entrepreneurship really uh, was close to my heart number one then i said that if i can have a business opportunity where uh, i can uh, leverage uh, not employees but leverage people who are in business for the right reasons and if i can leverage all that inputs and the resources that i can get into that and train them and work with them as partners then that is something which will appeal to me so network marketing appealed to me on that front that is one was Uh, i saw that there is not much huge investment required number one uh, number two is that if you have the right intent then you will attract the right kind of people into your team you can work closely with them you can teach them you can learn them you can guide them and uh, that is actually true leverage because just like company is when they form a company uh, you need to have you know the entire setup done and then you need to have employees uh, you need to have team members and all that so uh, in this business what happens is that you are leveraging the power of uh, like minded individuals who are committed towards a common goal so that's what happens and the third part is like you know just like in companies you have uh, shares right you have allocated shares you share you give shares to different people and people people pool it same way what happens in network marketing is that there are different uh, people from diverse background they all come together and they pool in their resources in terms of their knowledge experience passion and a uh, little bit of money in terms of you know what is required for them to get in and collectively work towards the common goal so that's what appealed to me and i would say that's a very good model to work on uh, network marketing provided you uh, get into it with the right set of values and with the right intent uh, it's very good so that's my solution that's what i found for myself and people who resonate with that uh, would really like to work with that kind of solution thanks for the wonderful question prema wonderful sharing satish i think personally i have seen people taking a step back when they hear this word called network marketing and i think you have really shared some or you know eye opening tips so dear friends viewers if you want to know all about network marketing always learn from successful people in that field and now you know who you have to get in touch with our own mr satish rao the network ma network marketer right so uh, thank you for that sharing yeah Uh, one more point. So basically, uh, I get to hear a lot. Like you know, uh, my family members say that you know that network marketing is not a good thing. You know, why do you get to get into all of that? So for me, I look at it like an opportunity. So if you look at all the best coaches and business leaders across the industry, even in India, you're seeing some amazing people. Some of them are there in this room also. You know, the chance that you get to prove yourself and do something meaningful in the field that you're in is all the more interesting when. things are not looking rosy for that field you know for example for me network marketing if it's got a bad name there might be something wrong in what we are doing you know so it's an opportunity for one to learn implement and guide people in the right way so it's a wonderful opportunity for people who are looking at it with a long term interest to get into it learn the right things and implement it and also guide people in the right way so that's what i that's my take on it thanks very exactly i think like you said yes we all actually you know get our calling but are you grabbing the opportunity that's very important and like satish said if you have to learn about that particular you know the field so if you have if you want to learn about farming you need to go to a farmer and not to a pilot so that's exactly what you know satish is trying to make us understand so thank you once again satish and uh, so let's move on to our ne next uh, speaker chetana So Chetana, our personal development coach and a podcaster. So Chetana, let us know what uh, you know what failure, how how failure can help us in personal development actually. Yes. Hi all. Can Hi. you hear me? Okay. First of all, I want to I want <laughs> all of you to wear a smile on your face. 
for five, for five seconds. <laughs> okay. Uh, because why I wanted to share this was this is one of the asset what I have in my life, which I have bought, cultivated, and I've been doing it, uh, wearing it always, has helped me to overcome a lot of failures. Chetna, so, it is pain. Can I stop now? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can. <laughs> you can stop. Chetna, you need to continue practicing. Huh? Yeah. You shouldn't pain. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, uh, so personally, failure is, is just a temporary defeat, right? So, and I believe that it is one of the best, bestest teacher in our lives, right? And it helps in the process of learning and innovation, right? So don't assume that, don't give, uh, assume this temporary defeat as your complete defeat and quit. See, until you quit, you are not a failure. If you quit, then you are a failure, right? So you might have lost your job. You might have lost in relationship. You might have lost your money. You might have lost relationship with your uh, kids, in-laws, and relationship. And I tell it applies for all the kind of relationship. Yeah, and you might have lost your job this year, right? You might have had your pay cut, right? The lot of pains or failures which you would have gone through, but when you reflect on these failures, when you reflect and understand the pain, what you went through, why you went through, what is that message you are getting it? Do a quality reflection on these failures. So once you do this quality reflection of your failures, then you'll move to a state of awareness. Why, it's, why it has happened, right? So now you are in the state of awareness, okay? So once you are in the state of awareness, Right, you know what are the things happening with you, why it is happening. So the next step is to act. Take actions, right? Once you take actions, that's the time when you will move to a different zone called as complete transformation, be it your personally, personal development or entire thing. So uh, if I have to tell your failure is directly uh, uh, what is that directly proportionate to your transformation agree guys if you agree just put a thumbs up so your failure is directly proportionate to your transformation and until you follow this process consciously okay so this is one part of it right and as i was telling you like you asked the question how it will help in personal development the first part is we'll become more vulnerable once we fail, we'll just understand and we'll be open to share what happened, right? And second important thing is hit hits us very badly on the three important letters, uh, three dangerous letters that is our ego. It will have a check on your ego, right? And the third is it will tell you that sucks, the path towards success is not a straight line, right? It is like this, right? So that is one. And fourth is you become more resilient. I'm sorry to that. I think that just give me a second. I'll just put my thumb in the room. So these are the, uh, these are the four things. So what I can tell you is it will keep a check on your ego. It will, you'll become more resilient. You'll be more vulnerable. And it will show that, show you and tell you very clearly that success, the path towards success is not a straight single line. Right. I think uh, as Vivek was telling, most of the achievers, we are seeing their names, whether it's Michael Jordan, uh, be it Oprah, be it Amitabh Bachchan, be it Mary Com, anybody in the, in the, who have achieved something in their life, who have reached that level, have gone through so many hurdles, which is not showcased. One day they'll come to the limelight when they achieve something. Right. So failures is I think we, we all of us know that if we, why do we go to school? We go to school, we learn and then we will give a test. Right. But life is not like that. Life, it will give you a test first and then teach you a lesson which we will never forget in our lifetime. So uh, Prima, I think uh, this is what I had to share that failures is a part of our success and failures, how we take, how we receive, I am telling you, it is directly proportional to your transformation, personal transformation. Wonderful, wonderful. That's too good, actually, you know, uh, especially when you said, uh, you know, failure is temporary and uh, 
Yeah, failure is your best teacher in life. You know, uh, very nice. So Chetana, uh, so if uh, you know, uh, could could you actually like you know share uh, um, any incident that has uh, led to your success? Okay, um, there are many failures. In fact, I have gone through, but the one which is very close to my heart, uh, as I was telling you. Failure can be by losing your money. Failure can be by losing your job, losing your relationship, losing everything what you have physical, uh, physically available. But for me, the failure, the lesson which I learned in a very hard way was the person whom I lost in my life. So that is the most. Uh, uh, I can't tell. I don't. I can't. Don't know to put across the words how it will be. Um, I would like to share this incident. It was in uh, November 17th, 2004. It was evening, 6 p.m., uh, where uh, uh, there was a music teacher who had come to uh, take classes for my daughter. And at 6 p.m., my brother and my mom walks out telling that they're going to a doctor. And exactly at 9 o'clock, I receive a call to my neighbor's house telling that my mom has met with an accident. And my brother is literally crying. And uh, we go to the hospital. And we'll be, be there. She'll be there because uh, she's been moved from one nursing home to the other one. I think in Bangalore, we have a hospital called Nimans. As it was an accident case, we had to move her there. Listening to this particular news, my I, I was already shattered. And what happened? We moved from uh, Nimans to one more hospital called Habaya Hospital, where she was under uh, ventilation for one complete day. So November 18th, 5.15 p.m., she was not there. She just left me. She just left us, in fact. So what happened to this incident? What, why I'm sharing this incident is this is not a failure, but this has taught me a, one of the best lessons in my life. So because one is we should value the people who love you and who care you the most. And second is don't wait until a person leave your life to understand their value in your life, right? And uh, third, what what I got was I became emotionally very strong, and I was I became more resilient after this incident. Though it took years for me to come out of this situation, but this was one of the greatest lessons which I would love to share in this platform, and which is very close to my heart, which I can never forget in my lifetime. Definitely, I, I can I can see the emotions, and uh, you know I can definitely relate. I can see how how strong you have become uh, when you say that. That has taught you how to you know become emotionally strong. Wonderful, thank you, thank you for that uh, sharing, Chetana. Uh, so next, let's move on to uh, Mr. Shankar Kulkarni, our uh, trading expert. I normally call this guy a sales, you know. A sales king actually because he's, he is so good in whatever he talks about trading so hi shankar uh, uh, let us know today how can you handle failure in trading oh yes uh, so one of the big things especially when it comes to stock market is we are all afraid of uh, what can happen to our hard-earned money so uh, in, in trading, especially when it comes to trading, is where you're actually playing or you're investing your hard-earned money. So uh, failure, handling failure, uh, learning failure is one of the key important thing if you want to be successful in trading because you will learn strategies, you will learn money management, you will learn psychology part, you will learn the basics of stock market, you will advance to the next level. But then if you don't understand how you handle so i actually call this which is when you encounter a loss it don't assume that it's not it is the opposite of a profit okay it's part of the business it's part of the trading that you are doing so once you have developed start developing this mindset but it's easier said than to be really practically to do this so it has been happening to me it has been happening to a lot of my students in fact in i have a coaching community of uh, more than 500 people so while in the trading room, the training room environment in the lab, it's easy to go through the losses. But when it hits your account, we actually go down. And we live or die on the last trading uh, results. If it was a profitable trade, we are very, very happy. 
if it gets into a loss then we like we lose our entire enthusiasm so that is when we have to understand how do we overcome the failure and get into the success part so first and foremost here is my bell plan to handle failure in trading first is accept responsibility there is nothing like owning your own failure because the more you brush it aside the more failure will come to you okay so don't brush it aside don't hide from it or don't blame the the external forces that is affecting your uh, failure okay when you take the ownership you will control your results and that is first step in achieving ha- handling failure second one is maybe you want to take some break and uh, come back very very strongly and when you are taking a break uh, get into a planning mode understand what can make you succeed when you come back next time okay this time you can rely on your past mistakes you can rely on the learnings from the mistakes and other stuff then not just a plan make a better plan because when you make a better plan you increase your odds of success okay so uh, and then executing the plan is a is is a must okay if you don't just if you just plan it if you don't execute it well so there's no use in taking a break planning it and making your plan also better so uh, that's that's a quick uh, game plan uh, if you want to handle failure in trading and uh, move away from failure especially this is what i am i am not talking about put aside your worries and curries in 2020 and move into 2021 with a proper battle plan so that you are you smile on your way to your bank account and uh, you can make lots of profits in your stock market trading prema very nice shankar that is it's it's very strong uh, you know when you said the uh, own your failures and take ownership not actually blaming anybody or market or any situation that's very very strong uh, so so you always remember that okay own your failure and take ownership okay so uh, um so you were you were actually mentioning a lot about uh, losses shankar how do we actually look at losses in training okay so uh, typically when when uh, we do a business uh, and uh, we have to uh, invest in say on hiring people or taking giving a rent we don't look at that as a loss okay but when in trading when it comes to trading we don't want to associate any costs to trading as a business so generally i look at trading or investing as a business so when you when i look at it as a business, i look at loss as a cost attached to doing a business so let's say you want to do either an online business or an offline business there is some cost attached to uh, building your team getting some assets okay or paying rent all of that stuff if you start looking if you can start looking at trading as a business that's one of the core ingredient of what i teach uh, uh, to my people uh, because when you start looking at trading as a business automatically your mindset is taken care of because you will then start becoming an entrepreneur not as an employee when you look at it as an entrepreneur you look at it from risk and reward orientation you don't look at it from greed orientation you don't look at it from fear orientation but you start looking at it from a risk and reward orientation that's the very uh, deep transformation although it takes time although it uh, you will have to work on yourself if you want to move from greed orientation to fear orientation to risk and reward orientation but once you arrive at this part which is the risk and reward orientation you have arrived as a trader and then after that the losses that you encounter and uh, this is what i one of my trip got very popular uh, prema and it has gone viral also which is called small loss big profit system small loss big profit system the system itself has a ment- i mean mindset included in this so i'm not saying uh, no loss but i'm saying small loss so when i say this i am telling my people that keep your losses small but keep your profits higher okay small loss big profit system and when you can have your losses small but the profits big automatically you will be 
profitable over a period of time similar to how if you have to become a better doctor better engineer uh, you need to give time some time also in trading you cannot uh, become successful trader overnight so overnight success in trading takes a couple of years okay so uh, you need uh, uh, you need a map uh, if you want to compress the time okay map includes your mentorship accountability process planning whatever okay so for the gap that you have in your trading you need map so gap to <laughs> map in 2021 is what uh, should be your aim to cover your gap with a map go ahead go ahead shankar i you know i couldn't help when you said you know, to gap the map and all those things and you you mentioned that overnight success uh, in in a stock market take years of preparation what what quickly resonated is like what rajat mentioned if you succeed in 10 in the 10th year it means that 9 years of hardship and preparation was there right like how um uh, a, a woodsman a woodman would actually prepare the axe for so many years and finally he cuts it right that's what it says so it it, it was very well connected with what you said and what you know rajat mentioned but so overnight that- overnight success is like i think it's a myth right it is that everyone of the any anyone and everyone has to follow a system you got it a small i mean big profit small pro, you know small loss system what you said is like great one right like that any system but you need to follow a structure and go with that right it's it is it does not mean that you know one day i just wake up and uh, i just want to you know get into stock market one day you get in and just make a profit and get out no right <laughs> right very true also 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 a bamboo bamboo tree example you know which we keep telling about as well that you need to keep watering and you know after 5 or 6 years you will find that the tree has been so long you know which is uh, outside of your imagination so i think um, I, i could resonate to all of us been talking even satish when he was saying of not network marketers or uh, shankar i think overnight success is a myth it's important to give a consistency uh, in the process and uh, continue doing it get more competency and you will find that all the years which have gone are not the failures but actually they are the preparation and then the success comes so yeah i think that's a lesson which i am been taking away also from okay. this discussion and i'm sure uh, some of you liking it yeah. too as well absolutely so, yeah. yeah thank you shankar thank you mm-hmm. and and especially the you no know, treat trading as a business you know it, it's not uh, you know it looks like uh, there's some audio yeah so uh, prema samish can you go on mute i think there's some uh, uh yeah oh my god okay <laughs> uh, how many of you are still hearing the ringing noise in your ears <laughs> so now not any more no, but no, no. Uh, because I it can't. was there that echoes right so <laughs> uh prema can you unmute now and try talking yes. again no i think there's an issue i think you have to use without the earphone you have to un- un- unplug the earphone from your system and then talk yeah can you hear me now yeah with uh, still uh, um a lot of uh, you know shrill noise in the background still still we are hearing yeah. the success sound <laughs> the divine sound <laughs> giving success <laughs> <laughs> okay um so this is one of the clue yeah prema you may want to just perhaps log off and log back in um yeah meanwhile uh, you know i actually i had a question for you prema you know uh want to ask a few questions to you to you know get your amazing input on uh, but i know i, I will hold on to it while the five of us will have a, a, a casual chat you you know you may want to log off and log back in yeah 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 that's a good idea yeah so yeah. uh yeah. sorry yeah. rajat you had did you have something to say rajat yeah so i think it's a good discussion and uh, i could uh, i could really uh, you know get it in my mind vivek as one of the one of the person i uh, admire who is my role model uh, being an author and author coach jk rowling uh, jk rowling know, yeah so this lady jk rowling uh, how she actually faced the failures it's kind of a epic of failures where she was homeless she was uh, 
divorced at a very early marriage and then the kid also uh, the infant which was there with her uh, she, she was jobless there was no family support and she mentioned that you know failure i would not call it as a fun it wasn't a fun but you know one benefit which he did, which she did mention vivek and uh, satish uh, shankar was that she could use all of her energy into one thing just a one thing which was something what that matters the most for her and that was writing wow so she had only typewriter with her a old typewriter only one old typewriter mm-hmm. from where the she, she was rock bottom i think uh, absolute rock bottom no money on a in a pocket nothing one typewriter on one hand and the other hand there's a infant baby that's how she has operated you know and today she is the richest and the wisest uh, lady and I, i could see that you know when i was hearing her and i always hear her i get the goosebumps you know that uh, if you have not failed if you have not failed in your life that means either you are too cautious and if you are too cautious that actually fails you automatically so you know it's important to take risks to take to to do take that plunge take a jump and then um, work on it fail yeah. again repeat is what i would say yeah. i think some so, of the so that reminds me rajat your one thing reminds me of this question and i want everybody who is either listening this live or will be listening this later to make a note of this okay so it is this what is the one thing you can do such you can do such that by doing it everything else will be easier or unnecessary okay so this is the crux of the the book called the one thing by gary keller and there is one more person so if you can every every time you are failed or you feel dull okay and or you feel that there are so many things which one should i do just ask this question which is what one is thing. the one thing you can do you can do such that by doing it everything else will become easier or will become unnecessary and you know one thing i will again mention shankar adding to it the failures actually helps you lose your choices failures helps yeah. you to lose your choices you know many times oh. we are doing so many things there are so many things available with us we want to do x as well y as well and z as well and when we see a failure in z then z is gone now only x and y left so i think that one thing that what shankar is saying now you need to ask that in that x and y which one i need to choose which will make my life easier or and the other one unnecessary not required and i think that will that will help that's a testimony from the richest woman who has and the wisest woman in the world uh, who's been doing this and practicing this Okay, yeah. we're back. Back with Prema. Prema, can you yes. hear? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prem- uh, is it better now? Much yeah, better. yeah, it's better, but better. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Prema, you have a question for Prema. No, yeah, Prem- Chetan would ask. <laughs> yeah, Prema, I just want to understand from you how does uh, failure in health lead to success? Uh, yeah so failure in health also can lead to success uh, it is true because i have personally experienced uh, but otherwise if you see you know if you read you know any life stories of successful people you will find that their earlier careers are littered with failures you know beat anybody in business or uh, in terms of health uh, for example i've read this book called heal your life written by louis hay Uh, so if you read that book you will understand how she uh, how louis hay naturally uh, you know came out of cancer naturally uh, you know so uh, so that's 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 a big learning for me and the important point is to use our uh, you know setbacks as a learning experience and make them as uh, you know stepping stones uh, stepping stones to the future success that's very important and because there are always positives we can take from every episode in our life um, you know or every health challenges that we go through 
and a good way to begin is my voice clear because i think i can hear something yeah 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 it's clear it's clear it's clear okay so a good way to begin the process is by asking yourself the right questions and uh, you know that will actually help you to find the answers so in this regard i would like to share something personal uh, you know maybe um, uh, so in in 2012 i i happened to have a small surgery and uh, so one month later uh, i uh, developed a post surgery infection basically so it was hardly a small uh, wound you know let's say a centimeter size wound on my abdomen but then because of uh, some reason uh, it became infection post surgery and then you won't believe i went on for about um, 18 months okay 18 months open wound uh, you know just keep going visiting doctor get uh, dressing done uh, you know you can imagine how how it is 18 months long and then again and finally my doctor said okay fine uh, so i didn't wanted to do a resurgery unnecessarily and that's why i had to put uh, you know put you through so many tests but everything is negative and and there is no positives so he said okay let's do one thing we'll do a resurgery only for the wound uh, because i don't see any trouble inside uh, so uh, we'll have to you know kind of um, um, uh it's it's become cavity now so let's do a, a you know resurgery by um, uh you know uh, he said it's just a small surgery i said okay fine and uh, we did it and then um uh, so so it's already 18 months and then now i've gone through resurgery uh, so you can imagine right so i'm, I'm obviously you know uh, expecting to recover from this problem but it still continues but he 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 told me now the there is a lot of cavity happened because of 18 months and um, it will take time but then but then you can imagine right 18 months i was still like all that it was on my abdomen so most of the time i'm like you know kind of uh, having that pus for problems and uh, all the time treating myself and dressing my neck would hurt so badly and even after going through re- resurgery same thing is going on um believe me i literally wanted to actually give up i just wanted to um give up i wanted to give up on this thing what i was going through and i wanted to give up on my life and uh, so we all have this uh, uh you know self talk right um uh, I, i mean that time i didn't know it's called self talk but uh, uh, you know uh, by default we all have this uh, self talk or in a voice and we have these questions so why i was telling you that you have to start this process by asking the right questions is uh, so the self talk that was happening in my mind was um, uh, it's like you know uh, non supportive uh, talks so i was like you know why me and when is this going to end uh, why am i going through this uh, one after the other health conditions when will this end so by asking these wrong questions when i say why me uh, why this health problem and why this pain why this infection what was happening was i was just attracting the same thing it was not going out of me right so all i had to do was uh, you know change my self talk so from asking why me why this pain all i happened to do was you know how come i'm worthy of being healthy you know how come healing is so easy how come i'm free from this pain how come i'm free from this infection uh, you know so how come my body is supporting me in healing so this is how i changed my self talk from you know non supportive talking to positive thoughts uh, you know motivating thoughts and then uh, so uh, with those uh, with that positive self talking i uh, you know uh, made it even more stronger by going back to this book called uh, heal your life written by louis hay i was just telling you so i went back and i amplified it amplified this whole process by uh, again reading these uh, affirmations so she uh, louis hay has given very beautiful affirmations related to every pain or every trouble or every health condition we have today so i just went back and you know uh, quickly uh, uh, you know i wrote down all those affirmations that i need for that moment according to the situation that i was going through right and i made it even more stronger by writing it down 
you know i think vivek was mentioning it right gratitude journal it's very very important it's changed my life so much so you know i i changed my self talk and then i i i learned what are the affirmations right it's just helping i've already got into self talk and i'm taking help of these affirmations by uh, you know uh, having the right affirmation for the right part of the body for the right situation and i make it more stronger by writing it down in my gratitude journal every day and then let me tell you so after that 18 months another 9 months so can you imagine that's like 24 months plus right somebody having open wound and uh, so just two months after my resurgery uh, sometime in march i had my resurgery and in may with the open wound i went and joined yoga classes and then i got into all these three practices and even till to even today my yoga master actually calls me you know you're a fighter she uh, you know she uses me she uses me as an example for the new students by saying you know she's a fighter like you she's encouraging me at the same time she's also giving strength to the new student by saying you know she's a fighter like you she was a fighter like you you know you know how it feels when your master says that and uh, finally um, you know when i did these practices of just changing from non supportive thoughts to positive self talk and adding all these things i'll tell you by december it was all done i was healed wow. of that wound forever and i'm absolutely fine till today wow. so you see how strong thoughts can change because your thoughts not only is in you but it's in your surrounding in your environment so that's why it's it's very important you know how what kind of thoughts we fill us uh, you know fill our day with or fill our mind with completely yeah. agree prema <laughs> completely agree and uh, i do believe that thoughts are so powerful i it can it's a very powerful weapon it can anchor our life it can anchor our day it can do anything so i think uh, you are just giving an example of health it is applicable to all the areas of our life absolutely and, uh, yeah and my next question prema like uh, can you share some tips or seek like the how a person can move from this uh, state of failure to success when it comes to health sure uh, now i think uh, you already shared few but of course you can add on to that definitely now the secret to our health is found in our daily routine okay so how how you uh, plan your daily routine is very very important because we will never change our life until we change something we do every day right yeah. I, you might have heard the saying that living the same life 365 days is not called life so which means if you're doing something same every day this is not it's not going to help you in terms of changing anything or progressing in anything so same thing applies to our health and whatever health goal we want to achieve we need to start working on it you need to have a health goal and start working on it because nothing will happen if we do nothing at all agree yeah agree completely <laughs> agree <laughs> so just like i said because of this gratitude journal and then the writing habit uh, you know that uh, automatically i cultivated the writing habit uh, so it's very important to write down your health goal whatever health goal you want to achieve write down and once you write down learn faster how to achieve it because every learning will give us new a uh, new perspective on how to you know get into better way of living healthy because at the end of the day we are what we eat yeah right and we need to get well if yeah. healing has to happen in your body we need to first get well so make sure to get well and so that your body will heal itself uh you know by adding uh, nutrition with which includes nutrition dense and natural foods and improve focus on your health right so they say uh, where your focus is that's where energy flows and uh, whatever you focus on it expands which means if you're ex uh, if you are focusing on a problem a pro the problem expands if you're focusing on a solution the solution expands true so when you focus on your health the energy is automatically flowing in improving your health and your health is expanding day by day in a better way 
Okay. So improve your focus, you know, and, and focus on that particular health goal one at a time. You don't have to take everything. Start from the small and then go to the bigger one. Okay. So that's very important. And and finally, the, uh, the most important thing, uh, please stop procrastinating. I know we have all done this and, and that's why, uh, you know, that's why we all are here to help you, uh, you know, to have some shortcuts, uh, you know, how you can go ahead without doing that procrastination because uh, you know our, our vivek normally says in finance pay yourself first so similarly in health i would say you become healthy first then it's easier to make others healthy because when you don't know the importance of health or when you don't take care of your own health it's, it's never going to be easy to take care of the health of your family member because you're not going to understand the pain they are going through or the transformation they have to go through. But when you you take care of your, your health, just like paying money to yourself, uh, take care of yourself, transform your health, and then it becomes absolutely easy to transform health of your family and your whoever you know, surround, you're surrounded by. Thanks. I think that's a wonderful tip, Sprema. I think uh, I last 30 seconds. I just want each one of you to share one thought or one tear. This thing, starting from Shankar, what would you like to share? So, uh, starting from Shankar, if you want to change yourself, uh, first you need to change yourself. Okay, on a lighter note. So, uh, so don't take failure personally and uh, just make them as part of your success system automatically you understand that uh, uh, you every time you fail that you are going an inch towards your success so that's my wrap on 30 seconds yeah uh, satish yeah so my take on this is like this that failure is not a failure it until you decide that you're going to get up and do the next step and take the next action step it's only a failure when you decide that okay, I'm going to Okay, okay. Vivek, what, what are your thoughts? I simply resonate what Henry Ford said. Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, but this time more intelligently. Otherwise, it's stupidity. Okay. What about Rajat? <laughs> so I will say, I will say that, you know, as Prema was asking, uh, I was mentioning that ask the right questions. So you need to ask a right question to yourself that is that desire to succeed or fear of failure? Which one is uh, giving much more higher weightage in you? So if it is coming out to be desire to succeed, then don't be worried of failures. Just go yeah. ahead, do it and okay. uh, it will work out. Okay. What about you, Prema? Uh, so this last point, I would repeat the same thing. Because if you don't do nothing, and uh, nothing will happen. So keep the failure aside and be selfish. You become healthy first. When you become healthy, it, it becomes easier to make everybody healthy. Wow, nice. And uh, I think I would like to share, uh, as I uh, told you, failure is just a temporary defeat. Don't accept that as your defeat. And if so that is one thing. And one more thing, what I would like to add on is aspire, inspire before you expire. So wow. <laughs> with that. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So with that note, I think uh, we yeah. all care. We would like all of us would take uh, like to take leave from uh, today. So fortune talks and anyone would like to share what would be our next week's topic. I think Shankar can share Shankar or Vivek, anyone can share it. So that so the yeah, audience uh, know what so basically next year is all about how can you make 2021 the best year ever at okay if you want to make 2021 the best year ever at next sunday uh, don't watch arnab goswami don't watch uh, any of those netflix okay come and uh, participate uh, answer i mean be a part of our sessions we, we are planning to make it much more interesting and uh, get something okay because as prema says nothing moves if nothing moves right so nothing so you move first if you want something to be moved in your life go ahead, go ahead the other time you mentioned something about uh 
uh, mapping the gap, right? How to map the gap. So Correct. from that perspective, from the map perspective, we have the GPS coordinates next week, actually, for this. Yes. For 2021, yes. we have the GPS yes. coordinates for you. Go to the full form of GPS. GPS has to be like a GPS is G for P for... No, no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> S is for next week. S yes, is for thank you, Sam. We will always guide you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.